China has made it. It's quite a feat. China's artificial sun has broken a world record. It's been able to produce power by fusion for a full seven minutes. China has used nuclear technology to finally replicate the sun. It sounds unbelievable, but it is accurate. This breakthrough nevertheless makes one wonder if China can handle the fallout from such an accomplishment and whether something may go wrong. Though they have long been a technical superpower, the Chinese have just demonstrated their prowess by sending their artificial sun into space. Join us as we explore this fascinating innovation, the Chinese sun, in more detail. Global race at the sun's core lies an atomic inferno, a mass that creates extraordinary gravitational force with immeasurable pressure. The core of the sun resembles a pressure cooker that is filled with hydrogen isotopes that pair up to provide the Earth with light and heat. This light and heat are responsible for the survival of every species on this planet. With helium, there's a fascinating process that goes on within the core of the sun called fusion. And fusion is the holy grail of energy. Why is fusion so special? To begin with, there's no radioactive waste. There's no messy trail of nuclear leftovers to deal with, but there's another good reason. The fuel needed to make this process happen is easy to procure. All the scientists need is some heavy water and irradiated lithium. Fusion is an eco-friendly energy power source. There's minimal risk of greenhouse gases and there are no environmental repercussions. This is the reason why scientists around the globe are eyeing fusion as the golden ticket to a clean energy future. More importantly, this energy revolution is a game changer, especially for nations that are heavily dependent on oil and gas exports. That is the reason a global race is going on, and China might have beaten the world to it. Governments and investors around the globe have thrown down their chips. The main contenders include big states like the United States, Russia, and China. But how exactly does nuclear fusion happen? Why is it better than the other nuclear processes? And is it less expensive than other sources of energy? A breakdown of nuclear fusion. Let's break down the process. First, it's important to understand how regular nuclear power plants work. These plants predominantly use fission, and this process is the opposite of fusion. In fission, to produce energy, you need to break atoms apart. In this atomic demolition, enriched uranium gets bombarded with neutrons which sets off a nuclear chain reaction. It's an effective process, but it's much riskier than fusion. The Chernobyl saga still survives in the memories of the world. Now, fast forward to today, nuclear fusion, or the creation of an artificial sun, aims to play it safe and produce next to no waste. That's a game changer. The world learned from the USSR's nuclear power plant as it is known that fission creates long-lasting radioactive waste. Fusion, on the other hand, is a futuristic energy source that works by combining two light nuclei into one heavy nucleus. This process requires high pressure and temperature similar to the Earth's core. To make this process possible, scientists require deuterium and tritium isotopes. These are the key elements that fuel this artificial sun Deuterium is extracted from seawater, and tritium is obtained from lithium. Both are abundant and widely available compared to uranium. The most interesting part is that the deuterium in just one liter of seawater can produce as much energy as 300 liters of oil. That's a lot. To put it in a better perspective, a tiny amount of fusion fuel, just a few grams, can unleash one terajoule of energy. That's enough to cover one person's energy needs in a developed country for six years. This is the reason why each country is in the race to develop an artificial sun. But how specifically does China's artificial sun work? How does the sun work? After the scientists have gotten their tritium and deuterium fuel, the game plan is simple. But putting the theory into practice is tricky. For starters, scientists require an immense amount of pressure and heat, which can turn the fuel into scalding hot plasma. At this temperature, the atoms collide with a lot of kinetic energy. But how high of a temperature? Almost over 100 million degrees Celsius. Not to mention that the atoms also need to get hot enough for the nuclear attraction force to overcome the electrical repulsion. So, how is China doing this? To crank up the heat, China is using magnetic fields and laser means. These tools convert the fuel into hot plasma. This is just the start. 
Further in the process, more fuel is required to tame the heat so the artificial sun doesn't melt down. The problem arises here. There's no material that can handle scorching 100 million degrees Celsius. This is where plasma confinement comes in, and China has nailed down this technique. New world record. Recently, China's artificial sun just smashed a world record. In a feat that seemed impossible to achieve, China kept its nuclear fusion reaction going on for over 17 minutes. The experimental advanced superconducting tokamak, aka Eastern Hefei, Eastern China, created and sustained plasma for over 17 minutes, shattering its previous record of 101 seconds in 2017. This marked another important step toward creating high-efficiency, inexpensive thermonuclear fusion reactors. It's fascinating because developing this is similar to the Chinese having unlocked the secrets of the universe. Anthony Cuthbertson, an expert at Independent, explained in detail what happened at the power plant. Experts cranked up the heat in this latest experiment to a mind-blowing 126 million degrees Fahrenheit. For comparison, that's equivalent to five times hotter than the sun, and the sun is already scorching at 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit on the surface. What about the sun's core? That's a different story. The temperature is almost close to 27 million degrees Fahrenheit at its core. Gong Xianzu, an expert researcher from the Institute of Plasma Physics of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, was more than optimistic and excited about the experiment. He explained that this operation laid down a solid scientific and experimental foundation to move toward launching and running a fusion reactor. In simple terms, he meant that they were on the brink of something huge here. Was this the first indication that China is about to launch its artificial sun? Maybe. The whole point of EAST is to provide energy for the entire world. According to the Xinhua News Agency, China highlighted big ambitions by stating that EAST is the potential clean energy goldmine for Earth. According to the Department of Energy, tokamaks, including the EAST, are at the forefront of the fusion game. This tool uses magnetic fields to wrangle and corral plasma, an electrified, high-temperature gas that, as we discussed, can cause meltdowns. Now this plasma is brought to you in a loop course called a torus. This is a high-stakes racetrack for particles on a microscopic level. Inside the tokamak, lasers do their magic on heavy hydrogen atoms, deuterium and tritium, turning up the heat to hundreds of millions of degrees Fahrenheit. This is all done to replicate the gravitational pressure that takes place in the sun's core, and any star that's comparable to, or greater than, the sun. It doesn't sound easy. But China's East has aced the challenge. Keeping this plasma locked and loaded at insanely high temperatures without any leaks is impossibly difficult. Scientists have been chasing the dream of nuclear fusion energy for over 70 years. The struggle hasn't gotten any easier. This is one of the reasons why the world is shocked at China's artificial sun. It's a true show of power. Live Science reported that creating an experimental tokamak reactor that produces more energy than it sucks up hadn't happened. Yet. But that's where China's success with East came in. It provided the world with a glimmer of hope that we might be on the brink of revolutionary change in the way we produce energy. However, China's East isn't the only tokamak reactor in the game. It's the warm-up act for an even bigger tokamak reactor. It's the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, or ITER for short. ITER is set to be the world's largest nuclear reactor, and there are multiple countries involved in this project, almost 35 countries have been investing in ITER, according to Live Science. These countries include the United Kingdom, China, India, and every EU state. Currently, the world is treating China's East as a testing ground for the big show in France, where ITER is gearing up for action. Can ITER be launched without any potential bigger problems? A matter of scale, is China's fusion project the green energy super project we've been waiting for, or is it just another oversized white elephant? Some believe it's only a matter of when, not if. Song Yuntao, the deputy director of the Institute of Plasma Physics at the Hefei Institute of Physical Science, has expressed confidence in this project. According to him, by 2040, the Chinese will be effectively generating energy. He reveals that the Chinese will begin building the fusion reactor in five years, and that it will take another 10 years to complete. Once it is constructed, they will build the power generator and begin producing electricity around 2040 or so. That's a bold move that could potentially catapult China to the front of the green energy race. But 
China isn't the only one making leaps in this race. In 2020, South Korea's KSTR fusion reactor also made considerable progress and set a record for maintaining a plasma temperature of over 100 million degrees Celsius for 20 seconds. It's an impressive move, but is it impressive enough? Meanwhile, the UK is also gearing up to beat the Chinese. The Cullum Center for Fusion Energy near Oxford has put its pioneering reactor, JET, through its paces. It's a one-tenth scale model of the mammoth $22 billion ITER project. Joel Mayu, co-leading the scientific program at JET, stated that the UK is ready for the race. Once ITER is fully operational, the dream team behind it believes this colossal device could be 10 times more efficient than the systems the world has right now. According to the BBC, experts are pretty confident in the idea, but there's a catch. Size matters. Experts agree that for fusion to work, the resources required are exceedingly high. Professor Ian Chapman from the UK Atomic Energy Authority breaks it down. He states that fusion requires resources for it to work on a big scale. He was keen that ITER would work, but it could be a long time. However, he was optimistic about the idea that when ITER works, it will see a huge amount of investment come in, especially from the big countries and investors. However, countries like the US are working towards creating an artificial sun regardless of the investment. The US Department of Energy's laser facility in California has also thrown its hat into the bucket. According to Nature.com, the department shattered its own record by giving out over 10 quadrillion watts of fusion power for one second. That's about 700 times the entire US electrical grid generating capacity, an impressive feat. Moving further, the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory is also putting brain power into this concept. Currently, they've come up with a computational method to simulate the collision of free electrons during fusion experiments. What does this mean? In simple terms, it means that the team has figured out how to control the electrons that are speedy and unpredictable during the fusion process. In Europe, the European Investment Bank is investing millions of euros into the Divertor Tokamak Test Facility aka DTT. This is an Italian program aiming to produce some fusion energy by 2050, displaying a serious sense of commitment. Will the world ever see the reins of an artificial sun? Is China ready to handle the responsibility of sending out its artificial sun into space? Only time will tell, however. One thing is for sure. An artificial sun will be an energy revolution. Is the world on the brink of experiencing an energy revolution? Let us know in the comments below and stay tuned for more updates.